So, once again, the Terminator franchise is attempting to resurface from Limbo. This time, Alan Taylor, the director of Thor 2, has decided to take a crack at it. He extends his hand as if to say, Come with me if you want to live. Hmm, do we trust him? The film opens and we're treated to a solidly entertaining and intriguing setup. We witness a more fleshed out version of the post-apocalyptic landscape from Terminator 2. The visuals are engaging, the action is visceral, and we get a good sense of the motivations that drive our protagonist. Then I start to pick up on the music. It's that two-note ostinato made famous by the Dark Knight movies. I stop and think. This musical idea has been used to death over the past few years. If you try to distinguish yourself from all the other big action movies that are coming out at the moment, why are you trying to sound like everyone else? Now what seems to be the issue here stems from two common problems that are found in many recent films. Firstly, directors don't have enough confidence in the ability of their composers. Secondly, some directors think they know music. They really don't. What they do know is what has worked in the past. So what do they do? They settle for a musical cliché. In a way, my impression of the opening of the film reflects my impression of the film as a whole. For the first half, I really got into Terminator Genesis. The setup was cool, the action was fun, and the plot started developing in interesting ways. I didn't even mind the plot twist that was ruined in the trailer, because it took on a new meaning in the context of the story. There were also some genuinely tense moments. One thing I can't complain about, which I thought I would, is Schwarzenegger's performance. I mean, to many people, the guy has become a living parody of his former self. Not the case here. Instead of just phoning it in, the old Austrian tank is back for real this time. Arnie shines in a slightly more nuanced version of the role that made him big. Amelia Clarke makes a real impression as the new Sarah Connor, and I don't think Jai Courtney's performance was quite as bad as people make it out to be. Before you naysayers out there conclude that he can't act, watch Joel Edgerton's felony. You'll be sorry. As for the film, it hits a bit of a downtime. You know that moment in a film where the characters have to stop and have a Kit Kat? Yeah, well the film doesn't really recover. It's like the movie was playing a great game till half time, but then when it's time to return to the field, it can't keep it up. Then the movie literally loses the plot. As in the plot, the story that the film had going for it just disappears. Instead, we get a largely forgettable and anticlimactic finale that raises more questions than it answers. From the moment I got settled into Terminator Genesis, I was convinced I was in for a journey worth taking. Unfortunately, as the second half made me realise, I should have waited for the DVD. That said, it was definitely better than Terminator 3, and if you're dying to see the Governator be awesome again, feel free to check it out. As for those of you who have seen the movie, what did you think? Should Arnie be back for more? Or is it about time we said hasta la vista, baby, to this franchise? Technically, hasta la vista means till next time. Yeah, there's no getting rid of this franchise, is there? As always, please like and leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to live.